Okay, so let's uh, get started with the third uh, lecture of the course. <clears throat> and I think everything is ready. Okay, so let's go. As I said the other days, uh, if you have questions, comments uh, regarding the previous uh, contents, uh, uh, you can ask uh, now, and maybe I can give more details about some deviations or about something else. Otherwise, I will start with the new content from the also, uh, if you want to get a certificate of attendance to the course, uh, please go ahead and write your name in the, in the chat. Okay, so if there are no questions, well, first of all, uh, can you hear me correctly? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, so let's get it started. So, just a very quick uh, summary of uh, yesterday's uh, last thing. So basically, uh, we were discussing that uh, decision making can be summarized as uh, basically we will be choosing an action such that the respective loss over some distribution of the state of that action in the spot. Right. So at the end, uh, decision making, at least uh, conceptually, is quite simple. Once we know what are the actions, what are the states, uh, how to how to quantify preferences using a lot function, and we really assess the, the probabilities of different states is a matter of so this is the expected loss. And this expected loss basically measures the performance we are going to have uh, by choosing action A. Okay. So expected loss uh, are also known uh, as uh, risk. Just in case, well, we are going to be discussing about this later, so then we will. <coughs> To describe expected losses as risk. Uh, um, a subtle difference is that when we talk about risk, uh, we usually mean the expectation of the loss with respect to the true distribution. Well, this can be just some expected loss for certain distribution, not necessarily the, the true one. <coughs> anyway, so. That was uh, decision making in a nutshell, and then we defined uh, several things like uh, entropy. So entropy was the best uh, possible performance. So basically, it was um, this. Uh, as I said also yesterday, sometimes I'm going to use this shorthand notation to denote effective losses. If I put the probability distribution in the second argument, I think the expectation of the loss. So the entropy in that sort of time is just the uh, minimum expected loss, the best possible performance. We also define the depth. I mean, first of all, we define base, base act. So the base act for some distribution P, this is the entropy of P. The base act for some distribution P is the solution of the above utilization. So, the regret is basically how much we dislike uh, to use uh, certain action A when the state follows distribution P and that's. Uh, Respective loss of that A minus the best possible respective loss, which is the entropy. And we also define the divergence as a measure of uh, how similar two distributions are. And we measure how similar two distributions are by measuring the retail 
of taking the best possible action for the initial view when the actual distribution is good. <clears throat> okay, so this is just a quick summary of uh, what we did uh, yesterday. And yesterday we also we also did a couple of examples. And as I promised uh, today, at the beginning, we are going to continue with uh, uh, more uh, examples. These examples have been a little bit more involved than yesterday, but also more interesting. So let's uh, get started with examples. And the first one, we are going to talk again about the option. So let's talk about again about options. <clears throat> so if you remember what well, this example is just a usual seal bit option, and we saw the state is the um, highest bid with folders. The actions are our bit. And the loss of uh, choosing bit A when the highest bit is S. We saw that one way to model that is uh, zero if our bit is smaller than the bit of the others. We don't get the price, and then the loss is going to be A minus M if our B is bigger than the other. So this was because uh, if our B is bigger than the other, we have to pay A euros. So that's a loss. But we are going to get the, the tag for whatever the it is. So that's uh, negative loss because it's something that we like. And we said that uh, we like uh, that product for the maximum amount of money that we are willing to pay is M, so it makes sense to model it by A minus M. Okay, so let's continue a little bit with this example, just a little bit more. Uh, so the highest bit is going to be one number of euros. So assuming that uh, you can, that everybody can Bid any amount of euros, so this can be uh, positive real numbers, and our bid uh, can be also positive real numbers. Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, now <coughs> try to see how to how to decide uh, how much uh, we are going to. Okay, so when so this is the decision problem, as uh, we said uh, two days ago, or maybe yesterday, the decision problem has three objects, the state, the actions, and the log function. Once we have these three objects, uh, we can uh, choose action by trying to make this expected loss a small. And the smallest expected loss is going to be the entropy. So let's try to do that in this example of the uh, options. So now we are trying to find what's the best uh, possible bid in this problem. We are trying to minimize the expected, uh, the expected loss of this function. I'm going to write it. So, uh, we are going to be making expectations with respect to state of this function here. So this function is zero uh, when a is smaller than s and is this other quantity when a is uh, bigger than s. So the expectation so now of the distribution of the state now we are modeling the state as uh, positive real number, so that's going to be the integral of uh, the function that we are integrating, in this case, a minus n multiplied by the distribution of the 
So I think it's the of S and DS. And now <coughs> this function, well, this function is for positive uh, numbers. And then uh, we saw that uh, uh, this is uh, this amount only when S is uh, smaller than A. So this interval is between zero and A. Okay. So I'm just using the definition. I'm just using the definition of the of the expectation. Right? The function is the function here, where s is bigger than a to zero, and when s is between a and zero. Okay. So now let's try to minimize. Let's try to minimize uh, this expression. So this thing here is a function of a. This is something that depends on a. So let's try to find a that minimizes this expression. That would be the best uh, possible fit for us, right? So let's uh, make a plot of this figure and see what would be the what would be the plot. So it's a function of a. The function I'm going to plot is uh, the integral between zero and a of s to minus n yes yes well first of all uh, a minus minus m does not depend on s uh, so we can take it out and we get the integral between zero and a of the ds and Okay, so let's let's make a picture of this function. So when a is equal to m, when a is equal to m, that's the maximum amount that we are willing to pay for that uh, product. This function is zero. So this thing is going to be zero, and this other thing doesn't matter like this. So the function, so the function is zero. Uh, when a is equal to zero. This integral is going to be zero, so the function is also going to be zero. So this function goes to these two points in any case. And then uh, for values of a between, between zero and m, this uh, part here is going to be negative, and this other part here is going to be whatever, a positive number. It's going to be something that depends on the distribution of the state, but it's going to be a positive number. So in uh, this part, in this region, the function is uh, negative, and uh, the state it has it can be whatever. So the state, <coughs> the state of the function, well maybe. Maybe the function has to be increasing or it doesn't matter. So it has some state between zero and m, it's negative, and it has some state. The state is going to depend on the, how is the distribution of the state. And then when the when a is bigger than m, this is a positive number, and this is also a positive number. So in this other side, it's going to be something else, but this something here. But in this uh, part of the, in this region, it's going to be positive, and here it's going to be negative. Right? <clears throat> so we are trying to find the, the bit that makes this function the smallest. So that, uh, that bit in, the, in this picture is going to be here. So this will be the base time. So this will be the base time. So the base time. Uh, well, from this picture, we can know a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, the best bit is always going to be a smaller or equal than m. It's always going to be between m and zero because the function is negative here and then it's positive and we want to minimize. So the best possible bit is going to be between m and zero. That's uh, obviously true, right? I mean, we don't need to do any integrals or anything to know that. We know that if m is the maximum amount that we are willing for the for the product, our bit should be always between zero and n. 
So which uh, value is smaller than n we should uh, pick is going to depend a lot on what's the probability distribution of the state. I guess it also makes a lot of sense. So basically, what's the optimum bit for us is going to depend on what's the maximum bit of the others. So what are the probabilities of the different uh, maximum bits uh, for, for the others? Okay. But in order to know what's the optimum bit for us, we need to know we need to know the distribution of the of the bits. So, or the other. Right? So if we know this distribution, we could uh, have this function and we could uh, minimize it one way or another. <clears throat> but in order to take the best possible decision, we need to know the distribution of the bits of the other. Okay, and this function is a little bit complicated. Uh, and so on. so uh, the way Somebody could use this in practice. I don't know if people do this, but I guess uh, some people do. It's well, if I need to have the probability distribution for the bits of the others, maybe uh, one thing I can do is to, to check what was the highest bit in a previous uh, option for similar products. And maybe for those uh, highest bits, I can make a histograms or some sort of approximation for the bit and then minimize. That function to hear some approximation. So that would be one way to do these things. But as, as we are going to see in a minute, there is a there is a better way to or, or there is a different type of option that makes everything very easy. Okay, so I hope this is clear, right? So we need something smaller than m always, and how much is smaller is going to depend strongly on what the distribution of for the highest bit. Uh, in this example, I'm not going to continue with dividends uh, and divergences and so on because I don't think uh, the expressions are very interesting. I didn't do the expression to be honest. So if some of you want to go ahead and try to see how is the divergence or the or the regret uh, for this problem. That would be an interesting exercise. Okay, so this is the picture for options. And now uh, we are going to continue a little bit with options, with options, with something pretty interesting, which are uh, called the uh, big three options. <coughs> So we have been talking about the usual bid and sealed bid options, and now we are going to, to discuss about the slightly different uh, notion of uh, options that are known as uh, big way options. So big way because of uh, William William. William Bigway, who got the Nobel Prize in the 90s. Okay, so, I mean, he got the Nobel Prize in economy because, uh, well, in the example, I'm talking about options in which uh, you can, you want to buy some object like in eBay or something, but as you can imagine, uh, options are used uh, for many economical transactions, so the design of options is very important. And in many other things. Uh, so, big ray options are uh, still big options, very similar to the options that, uh, that we have been studying before. So, uh, most of the things are exactly the same. So, every dealer writes uh, a bid in a sealed envelope, and then he or she sends the envelope to somebody that collects all the bids. Check uh, all the bids and then the, the price goes to the highest uh, bid. So that is exactly the same. So the only difference in these options is that the, the highest bidder the highest bidder uh, gets the price, 
but pays the second highest. Okay, so everything is the same. The only difference is that uh, if you are the highest bidder, you are going to pay not what you wrote in the envelope, but the second highest bid in the offer. All right, so this is a very small change. It looks very small and it looks like uh, I mean, uh, why would you want to do something like this? But it seems a little bit silly, but we are going to see. Uh, how this uh, small change uh, changes uh, a lot of things. Well, so before we do that, just a little bit more comments about options. So, uh, problems about options are that, uh, well, so you always try to uh, try to be very smart, trying to choose something as small, as smaller than n, so that uh, you save a little money, right? So this is the maximum you are willing to use, but you, Think very hard about what the others are going to do, trying to save a little bit of money. And this uh, thinking about uh, what's the best, uh, well, it's complicated. And also, <coughs> uh, this process of everyone trying to guess what the other is going to be causes a lot of problems because then the result of the bid is very unpredictable. And then also, each bidder has to be very selective about uh, how much uh, he or she is going to write in the, in the closed envelope. <clears throat> and, yeah, and some other problems that we will discuss later. But let's continue, let's continue with big reaction to see how all these problems. Uh, so this is the situation in a big reaction. Of course, the state, the actions are exactly the same. So the, we are going to get or not the price just exactly as before, just depending on the, the highest bid of the other. So the, uh, the overall highest bidder is again going to get the price. The only difference is that the P or C is going to pay something different. So S and A is exactly the same as before, and now the, the loss is slightly different. So if our bid is a small than is a smaller than the than the second than the highest bid of the others, then nothing happens. Just as before, we don't get the price, so nothing happens. Now, if our bid, if our bid is bigger than the bid of the other, if our bid is bigger than the bid of the others, then we will get the, the object. So when we get the object, we we like that. So we can model that as uh, just as before as uh, minus m, and then we have to pay something. And now it is where the difference comes. So in this case, instead of paying the amount that we wrote in the envelope, what we are going to pay is the second highest bid, which is uh, x. Right? So if we are in a case in which our bid is the highest, the highest bid of the others is the second highest, and then in this case, the loss is x minus x. Okay, so very tiny, tiny change in the loss. So as you can imagine, this uh, a small change in the option is not going to modify a lot uh, what happened in the auction. If you have an auction with many people participating, the fact that you pay the highest and uh, bid or you pay the second highest is not going to make a very big difference. If there are many bidders, the difference between the first and the second should be the small. And the loss is something like this. So now let's 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 do this uh, minimization we were trying to do. So now we are trying to find what's the best uh, bid for us. <coughs> Everything is the same, Good. very similar. We want to find the best bid, and then the, part, the function we want to minimize is uh, again we are going to integrate the priority distribution to yes, and then the function is going to be zero. If uh, S is bigger than, than 
A, we are going to be this amount with S, B, and between 0 and A. Just like before, and now the difference is that I'm increasing S minus M. The rest is the same. The only thing that changes is that in here, instead of A, we have A. All right. So now let's, let's, uh, let's find the best possible A. So this is, of course, also a function of A. And now we are trying to find what's the best uh, fit for that option. So in order to make that, I'm going to make now two figures. In one figure, I'm going to plot the function S minus M times uh, PS. This is going to be a function of S. And in the other one, I'm going to plot the uh, and the other one I'm going to draw the interval. And here I'm going to draw the interval, which is the, <coughs> the thing we want to we want to minimize, and that's a function of it. All right. So okay. Uh, okay, so then uh, this uh, function here. So this uh, function over S, uh, when S is equal to M, when S is equal to M, this function is going to be zero. When S is equal to M, this function is going to be zero. And for S is smaller than M, this is going to be negative, and this is some probability, so it's positive. So the function, so this function here is going to be, is going to be Negative. The shape of it, we don't know it, can be whatever, but it is something negative. When S is, uh, when S is uh, bigger than M, this is positive, and the probability is also positive, and this function is also I say I am saying it in white, but I'm talking in white. For S is smaller than M, the function is negative. It has some say that we don't know. And when S is bigger than M is positive, it's a that say that we don't know. So negative here and positive there, the say that we don't know, the say is going to depend on the probability division that uh, we don't know. Uh, and this is the function we want to optimize. So the function we want to optimize is the integral of this thing here. So whatever the say of this, and well, we start in zero, and then when we make integrals of, the, of this function, we are going to be so the integrals, for instance, uh, from zero to this, to this value is going to be the area of this set. So this function is negative here, it's going to be a, a negative, uh, negative value. <coughs> and as we as we move as we increase the value of S and we make integrals for higher values of A, the value of this function is going to keep uh, increasing, only decreasing, no matter what the no matter what the shape of this, uh, no matter what the shape of this function is, as we keep the uh, moving as we keep uh, integrating more and more values. Since all the values are negative, this is going down. And it will keep, uh, it will keep uh, going down till M. Right? Till we reach the value M. When we reach the value M, the function here stops to be negative and it starts to be positive. So now when we when we integrate for values bigger than M, we are going to have the integral of this and the integral of that. If this is negative and this is positive, the overall integral starts to increase. Okay. <clears throat> Is it clear that the function is always going to be like this? Going down, having the minimum here exactly in M and then going up? I hope that's uh, 
clear if it's not clear for the device. So, as you can see, when I, when I have been plotting this uh, curve and observing that the minimum happens in it, it doesn't matter what the, what the shape of this function The P, it doesn't play any role. So, uh, for any P in this side of the in this region, this function is going to be negative, and in that other side is going to be positive, and that's the only thing that needs the mean to be here. Right? So, well, so then this optimization is very easy. No matter what uh, what P is for any for anything that the others do, or any distribution of for the highest bit, uh, the best. Uh, Possible bit is always n. Okay. <clears throat> in, this, uh, in this type of uh, option. So, well, uh, we reach uh, this conclusion using this expected uh, uh, minimization approach, uh, integrals, and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, to reach uh, this conclusion, you don't really need to use uh, all these integrals and so on, just a little bit of uh, thinking about the problem uh, and then you that the best thing you can do is to choose n. Right? So basically, uh, one way to see why the best thing you can do is to choose n, no matter what you are do, is that well, if you choose n, so something bigger than n, you shouldn't like it. Uh, you need something bigger than m, there are chances that you are going to end up failing more than m, and m is the maximum amount you are going to pay. If you want to, if you if you think you can be a smart and choose something smaller than m and save uh, some money, then you will quickly realize that uh, if you choose like uh, m minus one. Like saying, okay, I'm going to save one euro. And uh, well, if you get the bid, uh, if you get the bid, and uh, it's because the highest bid of the other is smaller than n minus one. So let's imagine it's n minus ten, right? So you are going to pay n minus ten. It doesn't really matter if you choose uh, n minus one instead of n, right? Uh, you are going to pay n minus ten. If you use n or if you use n minus one, right? so it doesn't give you any advantage to choose uh, something as more than m. Right? So okay, so that's basically the idea in uh, degree options. So in degree options, uh, most of the problems of usual options are solved. So basically, now what happens is that well. Now it's very easy to, to decide how much to give. You don't need to be thinking very hard about what the others are going to do. The only thing that you have to do is to decide what's the maximum amount that you are willing to spend in that product. And then that's your best, best possible thing. <clears throat> so that solves a lot of uh, many things. For instance, in this case, uh, the bidders can make a public their bids. It doesn't matter. So the best uh, the best uh, bid is always going to be uh, no matter if I know what the others are going to bid or not. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, well, so then also in these options, uh, is uh, these options are very predictable, right? So in these options, uh, the result of the auction is is going to be that the person participating in the auction that likes the object the most is the one that is going to pay. So that's very predictable, and uh, you might think that that's uh, more fair in the sense that the one that is uh, likes the product the most is the one that is going to get it. It's also uh, predictable the amount of money you are going to give to the seller of the product. You are going to get the second. Uh, and maximum amount of uh, money that people are willing to, to pay for the product. 
Okay, something else about the peak reactions? Well, this, as I said, this is uh, very important in practice. So, for instance, uh, the Google advertisement that, that you, you see in the website. I mean, when you search for something in uh, Google, in the first, at the beginning of the website, you see four or five uh, websites that are advertised. So the way that the uh, Google charges for those advertisement is using something similar to big three options. So basically, many companies are all the time putting bids so that uh, their advertisement appears in Google searches. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is about the this is about options, and now let's do uh, a couple of machine learning uh, examples. <clears throat> so let's continue with the example of uh, uh, classification. Let's see what kind of people we have time to do classification. <clears throat> All right, so if you remember in the example of classification, the state there were examples, examples of things, uh, instances, and labels, and then the, the actions are going to be classification rules, which are functions from X to Y. And the laws uh, we are going to be using for now is going to be zero one laws. One compact way to write it is one minus the integral cross tangent x of x by the demonstration of i. Okay, so it's uh, zero if the rule correctly classifies x and it's uh, one for the time. So let's just start with the entropy. Let's just start the uh, Minimizing the expected loss in this problem. So we want to minimize now the actions are classification rules, functions from x to y, and then we want to minimize the expected loss of the sum distribution p of the loss, which is this function here. <coughs> All right, so let's uh, go ahead and do this. Uh, what's the easiest way to do about this thing? Let's see. So, well, the expectation of one is one, and the constants we can take uh, out of the sensation so that we, so this is the same as doing one minus minimization. Of the, the minus of this uh, indicator function. So, minimize a, a negative number is the same as uh, maximize. Uh, maximize uh, changing the sign and then uh, changing the sign again. Okay. So, um, all these things are very straightforward and then. This is the first time we might take this one unit. So, minimizing one negative number is the same as maximizing the uh, its uh, absolute value inside. Okay. So, okay, and then I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting about the expectations. So, let's do now. So, uh, doing the expectation of the indicator function is uh, computing. I'm going to write it in the paper of now. Let's let's go step by step. This is one, this is the maximum, and this is why. And now let's uh, let's write this down. So, but that we are doing the expectation of this. So
So that is meditation. We are going to be doing the sum over the distributions of x and y. This is t. I'm just waiting the meditation. And then here we will have the indicator function that is x. Is. So this Keep going. Uh, well, this thing is uh, zero if hx is uh, different to one, and is one if hx is equal to i. So then it means that uh, Probability of H and X and I, X and H and I. Okay, good. So all the other probabilities disappear and the only one that is probability is Okay, so I mean, this is just a little bit of information. I will start the thing with this okay. So anyway, so now we have to do this maximization, and this maximization might look at something very complicated, right? So we need to choose one classification rule, H, that makes this sum the highest uh, possible. But this optimization is quite uh, easy if uh, we realize all something. So basically, we have to choose one function, H, Right. It's a function from x to y such that uh, this sum is uh, maximum possible. So the thing is that we can do that uh, maximization uh, component uh, by component over x. So um, let's uh, do something very quick observation about optimization things. So if I want to optimize some function, over some vector, let's say we have n. If it happens that the function we can decompose as uh, some function over the components of the vector, so if we can decompose the function as the sum of some components. And there are no other constraints for the components, uh, no relationship between the components of this vector. Now, doing this optimization is very easy. So, minimizing the sum of something is the same as uh, minimizing every time you return the sum and then doing the sum. So, this is uh, Almost trivial observation, but very useful in many things. Right? So, minimizing a sum is the same as minimizing every term if there are no uh, relationship uh, among the, the terms. So, in this case, we are in a situation like that. So, in here, there are no relation for two different axes. We can choose uh, mm -hmm. different uh, values. H of x, mm. and there is no constraint about how we choose H of x for different x. Mm. So then uh, we can do this optimization differently for this x. And now for each, uh, for each x, the only thing that we need to maximize is what is our choice for uh, H of x. I put in here some of the y, but the y is already disappearing. Right? So the only y, the only y that survives in, after this uh, indicator is this value. So we can do some more things. And then we need to maximize <clears throat> Okay. So now we just need to find the one value for h of x that maximizes this uh, 
one will be there and let the other one. So, uh, and then we will do the sum. So, this is going to be one minus the sum of the x of the maximum value of uh, b is uh, y of this. Here I'm just changing the equation back to the y. Okay. So now this expression here. So we are first uh, computing the maximum of this uh, of this function for each x. We compute the maximum uh, over the y's, and then we do the sum of the x. So that thing is also a norm. So that's a mixed norm infinite one. So, I mean, this is not very important, but you can think that just an equation. So, in here, basically, we are mixing two norms. So, for every x, for every sub vector mixing the x, we are doing infinite norm, and then we are doing the one norm of all the infinite norm. So, this is a mixed norm. Okay, so, I mean, all the steps here are. Totally straightforward, I just went uh, 30 years in only. So the entropy, uh, as we said before, the entropy is going to be uh, one minus some norm. Also, in this case, you take the norm is equal to two times. Okay, so this is the entropy. This is the best uh, possible performance when the state, when the when the examples for distribution P. In the field of machine learning, to this number, so this is going to be a number right between zero and one, this is known as the base matrix. It's a guess. Um, some of you after the before Learning. So that's the best the possible uh, performance of a classification problem. For which the example for this. So that's the base risk. And then, but let's keep going with the other uh, uh, concepts we introduced the base star. The best uh, possible classification rule with the Examples for distribution P, well, we did it here, right? But we saw the utilization. We saw that the best uh, possible classification rule is a function from X to Y. And this function, what it does is that for every X chooses the Y that maximizes the distribution of P, right? The solution of this optimization is the function that for every x uh, chooses the y that maximizes this joint uh, probability. Mm -hmm. uh, in machine learning, this base act for this reason is known as uh, base. <coughs> and maybe for those of you that have been doing something in machine learning, have seeing maybe a slightly different definition of base rule. So um, this uh, joint uh, distribution is, of course, uh, the conditional of y given x multiplied by the probability of x. Very soon, we are going to be using this kind of expressions all the time. So I guess that the joint is one of these is obvious for all of you. So. This is the same as uh, finding the maximum of the y's of this expression. If we are finding the maximum over the y's, the value of the probability of x doesn't matter. So that uh, y maximizing that is the same as the y max maximizing the conditional distribution of the y's given the x. And maybe this definition was <coughs> something that uh, 
I end up having this, uh, having that discussion just because I'm not uh, the derivation that way. But, uh, okay, so that's the best possible classification rule. This is the best possible performance. I guess it's clear why this is the best thing that we can do if you know the distribution of the examples. In every example, you just pick the label. That of course, these uh, things I wrote here are important, but the interest is mostly a theoretical interest because in practice we don't really know this thing. So we are going to study maybe later today or tomorrow at the beginning what happened in practice, but it, this would be like the theoretical performance. Best performance. Okay, so this is a board classification. Did I do regression before the break? So regression is going to be very similar, but just to practice a little bit the uh, expectation and variances. Um, <clears throat> I didn't write the expressions for the regret and the divergence because I mean they are. Almost uh, straightforward from here, they are going to be a bit interesting. So, to save a little bit of time. Uh, I will try to write it for the regression problem because they are a little bit interesting. So, let's do regression now. <coughs> so, the case of uh, classification and the case of regressions are very similar. The steps are pretty similar. Moving the things that are different. <coughs> regression. So the problem in regression, if you remember, was very similar. We have x, we have y. The difference here is that y is not finite by by the real numbers of some linear space. <coughs> Uh, what determines if our uh, regression is good or bad are examples. Uh, we can choose functions from x to y just as before, and the uh, loss instead of being 0, 1 is going to be just the um, you know, square of the difference between our guess for y and the actual y square. Mm. All right, so let's do things. Um, so let's uh, let's now do the uh, entropy. So the loss is just like that. So we need to we need to minimize this. Uh, uh, so to so the expectation of a p. So p is a distribution of the both x and y. So the distribution of the p, the expectation of p, we can write it as expectation over the marginal in x times the expectation over the conditional in y. And previous derivation, I could have done it uh, this way, but uh, I don't know why I didn't use the conditionals. Of course, it doesn't matter. I guess this is this derivation. Okay, so we want to minimize this. Okay, and now we can use exactly the same and uh, the same uh, sheet or whatever. So our regression we can choose it uh, differently for every x. Uh, there is no relationship on one, 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 one x, uh, one x or the other. So this part, the expectation with respect to x, we can. Well, first of all, I hope this the fact that the expectation with respect to a joint can be decomposed with very clear theoretical arguments. So 
somebody who don't care about this, uh, you also can check again quickly the statistics for no. So you can ask now or try just to write the definition and, and you can see the Anyway, so we, we take the sum over the x's out, if you like, and now we are going to minimize for every x. So if we are going to minimize for every x, we just need to choose the image of a x in every x. We have conditional distribution of the y in the x and this uh, square the difference. And now we are basically done. So now we are trying to find the, the for every x, what's the number, what's the, oh yeah, what's the number in this case, a real number that minimizes this thing. So in terms of y, so this is the distribution for y, for every x, this is the distribution of y. So in terms of y, h of x is going to be one constant, and we are trying to minimize the expectation, the expected value of one constant minus the variable as well. Right? So the minimum of that is going to happen. So the minimum of that is going to happen when h of x, when h of x is the expectation of uh, y over the conditional distribution of y here. Okay, so this is a very simple, maybe a little bit confusing because there are x's and y's and it's not clear what are the values of the values but for every specific x, the random variable here is the y. This is one distribution of the y. So that the mean happens when you take the expectation of the y, the expectation you have to take is for the distribution. Okay, so this is also very uh, uh, intuitive, right? So the best uh, possible uh, regression function is just for every x, we take the expected value of y conditional by that. Okay, so that's that, and then we, so that's the h of x that gets the minimum, and then the, the value of this expression, when this is the expectation, is just the variable. So the expected value of the expectation minus the variable squared is the variance. So this minimum is the variance, uh, of variable y when the distribution of y is uh, y given x. So this is the conditional variance of y, right? And then we are doing this expectation. Okay, so that's the entropy. The entropy is the expected the conditional value, <coughs> which I guess it also makes a lot of sense. So this is the entropy, and this is the uh, uh, base uh, regression. This is the base risk in regression, and this is the base uh, rule for regression. Okay, I didn't know it's this, but this is of course. And I think maybe in two minutes let's do the regret and the graphic because this is the expressions are very interesting. Let's do it very quickly. So let's do <coughs> the regret. The regret of uh, some uh, regression rule in this case, where the state follows P. Uh, is basically just the expected loss over P of the loss if we choose uh, H of X. Uh, if we use H, Y squared, and then minus 
the best possible mind with the best possible performance, the entropy, and the entropy is this expression here. So that expression we can write as uh, expectation over P of the, the conditional expectation. All right, so now we can just uh, do operations here. And this is the same expression we, we did the other day. So this is going to be, <coughs> so this is going to be, so when we do this first, Okay, so now let's uh, put the uh, things together. So the ones go away, and now I have to do slowly. So this is going to be the expectation over the x of the expectation over the other. This expression here, so with respect to the I want I want to do the fast, but if I do it fast, this is why so and this expectation here for this expectation, this is a constant. This is a constant, so this is going to be square root of x. Here we will get minus two times. So this will be a constant, it goes out, but then we do the expectation of the y, we do the expectation of the y expectation. Okay. And now this thing here, when we take the expectation, and we have the constant and the y, when we take the expectation, we get the conditional expectation. I'm just doing the steps, one is lonely and the other is lonely, but it doesn't matter. And now these things uh, this, uh, disappear with uh, this two, and we get that. So that uh, we get this expected value of the exit of the uh, H of X minus the conditional expectation. So this would be how much uh, we dislike a uh, classification rule compared with the best possible classification rule. And it makes a lot of sense that a uh, hard regret is just the uh, expected uh, difference between H of X and the condition of the Anyway, so these expressions are quite simple, it's just a matter of doing the students and using the properties of the expectations, but 
maybe if uh, last time you did it was uh, years ago. Okay, so this is the regret, and now the divergence. The two of the divergence, which are not done, so the divergence between Q and P, it would be the regret for the best uh, uh, rule where the distribution follows Q. So it will be the expected value over the marginal of P of X uh, of the conditional expectation. Over Q of the Ys minus the conditional expectation. Yeah. Which I guess it makes also a lot of sense to measure the difference between two distributions instead in terms of how different are the conditional expectations. I mean, it makes a lot of sense for this problem in regression. Because integration, the only thing that really matters are the conditions. Even next. Okay, very good. So I think this can enter these uh, uh, examples. And after the break, we can start with the data. So we are going to be studying uh, from now decision problems in which we have data. And machine learning problems in which we have data. As you have seen, these two machine learning problems, uh, we still are not really machine learning problems uh, because we still didn't introduce the training data, which is uh, the most important part for that. Okay, very good. So let's uh, stop here and meet again in uh, 10 minutes. So at the uh, 10 uh, 20. Okay. Hello everyone, so we are back and we will get started in one minute. Before we start uh, using uh, data, uh, you have questions about the, what I did in the previous hour about the options or about base risks and entropy and so on. You can ask uh, now. Otherwise, we will we will start uh, with the database uh, decision process. So, in everything we have been doing up to now, there was no data. Everything was about the the decision problem itself references, the states, the actions, the losses, and now we will start uh, having data. As you are going to see in a minute, uh, the fact of having data does not change much in, in conceptually. So the way we are going to be dealing with the decision problems is basically the same with data or without data. So conceptually it doesn't change much. Uh, but as we are going to see, the performance can be improved significantly. Of course, depending on the problem. And also, so that's on one hand, and on the other hand, uh, using data make, uh, can have some difficulties in practice, but uh, we are also starting. So, well, maybe I can advance about that. So, something that you might, might have been wondering all this time is uh, uh, how we get uh, the probability distribution of the state. So, that's in practice, that's the main difficulty. And that's also going to be there when we use data, and we will be discussing that uh, uh, maybe a little bit today, but mostly. Okay, anyway, so let's go with the data based decision making. <clears throat> so, yesterday I summarized how we can do 
decision making in four steps. So let's write it down again. So first of all, we identify we identify the set of actions and the set of states. Second, we uh, assess uh, our preferences. Meaning that we determine what's the most assumption. And the third step uh, was to assess the uh, state uh, probability distribution. A distribution of uh, state and uh, then we we choose actually with uh, a small respect. Okay, so those were basically the, the steps. And now, uh, if we have data, if we have data, well, uh, if we have data, the actions that we can choose or the state that determines the consequence of our actions are not going to change. Those things are not going to change if you only have one data or another. And you want to have an example in mind about what I mean by having data. You can think in the in the uh, first example in the course. In the first example of the course, we are we were deciding uh, to take the umbrella or not to take the umbrella. So in that example, data could be. If you decide uh, to, to look uh, through the window in the morning and look at the clouds, so that uh, data, how the clouds look like uh, that day, is something that uh, can be useful to take the decision of uh, taking the umbrella or not. But of course, data is not going to change uh, what the uh, possibilities you have available. Take the umbrella or not, or it's not going to it's not going to change what are the possible what are the things that might uh, influence uh, the consequences that are going to, to happen in terms of sex. Okay, so data is not going to change that part. Data is not going to change our preferences. Right, so we like uh, what we like, and uh, that's it. So uh, to see the clouds or not see the clouds is not going to change uh, how much I dislike uh, to, to carry the umbrella. So the data only appears in step three. Right? So basically, if we have data. What we can do from the data is uh, we can use uh, the data to assess the probability distribution of the state. Right? In the problem, in the, this very silly problem of the umbrella, we can, we can use how the clouds look to assess what are, what are the probabilities of rain or the probability of rain. Okay, and then we again, we will choose the, the action we will choose the action that uh, result in a small expected loss when we compute the loss that we have identify using probability distribution that we assess uh, using the data. Okay, so this is, uh, as I said, basically almost the same as without uh, data. The only thing is that 
our assessment for how the, what things are possible and how possible are if things is going to change. <clears throat> so let's use a little bit of notation. So data. So for data, I'm going to use um, a small d to refer uh, to a specific uh, value of the data. And so this is going to be a specific value. And with capital D, I'm going to to denote the random variable, random variable. This right. So before we see the the data, the data is a random variable. Okay, so. Um, now let's let's see what's the difference uh, between using the data and not using the data in, in terms of uh, performance. So without data, without data, we will be using actions such that uh, this. Uh, Distribution, the expected loss with respect to the distribution of the state is small, and we will choose an action, and this will be a problem. Right? <clears throat> so now with data, so now with the data, we will be doing the same. Expected, uh, we will find something with the small expected loss, but now uh, the action. The action that we choose, the action that we choose, might be different depending on what the specific uh, data we have. Right? So if we look uh, through the window and it's very sunny, we will maybe not choose the umbrella. If we look through the window and it's cloudy, we can choose the umbrella. So the actions that we take are going to depend on you know, what the data we use, right? So when we do this expectation, now there are two things that are random. So the state is going to be a random, random variable, and also the data is a random variable. So when we do when we do the expected loss, we will be doing the, the expectation has to be done with respect to the state and with respect to the data. So basically, every time, every time we observe one specific value of the data, the decision problem that uh, we are that we are solving is a slightly different. So for every specific value of data, the decision problem is a slightly different. The only thing that changes uh, from one data instantiation to another data instantiation is that the probability distribution of the state is different. So this expression here we can write as uh, probability distribution of uh, S given B. <coughs> So this will be the expected loss in the specific decision problem in which we have one specific instantiation for the data. And then, since uh, uh, we are going to get the different instantiations for the data, the final performance is going to be the, the expectation. The one way to see that the decision problems is that uh, we have many decision problems, one decision problem per possible value of the, of the data. The way we solve any of these specific decision problems is just the way we solve these past uh, days. And then the only difference is that we are going to have many of those decision problems 
the final performance is going to be the expectation, the expected performance is going to be that. Anyway, but one way or another is the expected loss, the expectation we might do what we want to do. Okay. <clears throat> so this is basically how we can do uh, decisions using data and just the last uh, thing in terms of theory before going to examples can be to define something that we can call the value of data. So the value of data uh, is going to be, let's call it the B or the capital B, so that's uh, how valuable it is to, to have access to certain uh, data source, like how valuable is to look uh, through the window in the mornings when we want to decide to take down the data or not. So the value of the data is the difference in performance, is the difference in performance in expected loss. Uh, with and um, without the data. Okay, so that's very natural notion of value of data and the way we can compute that. Well, so if uh, well, so if the different in performance without the with and without using data, I'm going to measure the difference in the uh, best possible performance. So, in order to to have what's the what's the um, value of the data itself, I'm going to assume that in both cases, using the data or without using the data, we are going to do it the, the best. Uh, the best uh, manner, and we, we are going to compare the difference in performance, the difference in the best possible performance with the data and without. In the best possible performance, uh, without the, without using the data, is going to be the minimum of these expectations, and we saw that the minimum is the entropy of the distribution of the state. Uh, without using the data, just uh, the unconditional distribution of the state, you can think of this as the prior distribution of the state. This is going to be the distribution. And then if we use the data, so this is going to be one expected loss, and to that expected loss, we are going to uh, remove the expected loss if we use data, so this is without data, And with data, the expected loss is this expression here, which is going to be the expectation over the distribution of the data. And now the minimum value that we can achieve for each one of these are going to be the entropy of the conditional distribution of the S given T. So this is with the And uh, the value of data is always going to be bigger or equal than zero. Okay? And it's just doing the computation that we have been explaining, and we are going to do this in a couple of examples. Uh, before we do the examples, we can see some things. So, this is always going to be positive just by the definition. So what the entropy means in every case. Um, so this is always bigger or equal than zero, but it might be zero in some cases. So, um, in, so in some cases, the data is going to be useless for that uh, decision problem. If this uh, thing is zero, the data is useless. So this idea has taken a long time or something. Answer maybe for this one. So, in, uh, in which cases the data is going to be useless? In which cases, for uh, in 
some of the, um, I mean, maybe we cannot know exactly all the cases in which data is useless because that will depend also on the decision problem. But uh, maybe you can give me some examples in which the data is uh, useless. So looking to the definition of the value of data, and maybe intuitively, uh, in which cases the data is uh, useless. Hmm. Anybody? No, nobody wants to answer. Uh, so, maybe if, if data is conditionally independent from the state. Of the umbrella, right? If the data is uh, looking through the window, that seems reasonably useful. If the data is uh, uh, like uh, uh, looking at the newspaper, at the weather section of the newspaper, if we look at the weather section of the newspaper, that data seems uh, useful. But if we read instead the, the soccer uh, section of the newspaper, that doesn't seem that that data is going to help us at all if uh, we are trying to decide to take the umbrella or not. So just looking at the just looking at the expression of this, right? If uh, if the variables S and D are independent, if the state and the data are independent random variables, so it doesn't really matter what the decision problem is, but these conditional distributions are going to be uh, all the same and all equal to this other one here. So both terms uh, will cancel. So if the state and the data are independent uh, random variables, the value of the data is zero. <coughs> so that's well, so that's I mean basically I think it's obvious, right? I mean I think it's pretty much obvious if you have some data that is unrelated with what determines the consequence of your decisions. Of course, you might want to use as much machine learning or whatever you want to use, but you are not going to get anything from it. All right, so that's the end of the theory part about the data based decision making. As you can see, it's almost uh, nothing after we have seen all the things that we have. Right? So now let's do example. <clears throat> I think we have time at least for one example. And tomorrow we will do some other examples and we will talk about how you can use these ideas in practice. <clears throat> I mean, not that uh, what we have seen up to now is not useful in practice, of course it is, but we will see something more practical. Okay, so then let's do it. one example today, and we will continue tomorrow. So, this example is a continuation of uh, an example I wrote before the lecture. So, this is going to be data. Based um, So in that example, we had a, a finite set, right? We call it classes. In this example, classes I'm going to call them the minus one and that one, just to make uh, things uh, more simple. And uh, you want to have an example in mind, you can think that this is uh, so. This is. <coughs> So we want to detect if one um, plane or a mitosome or something like that is coming from the right or is coming from the left. So plus one we mean the mitosome is coming from the right and minus one is going to mean that the mitosome is coming from the left. So we want to detect 
we want to detect the one we will be using a radar if you like to detect if uh, some danger is coming from the right or from the left. So this is a, a situation we want to guess. So as we saw before, uh, we want to guess the right values and that guess is going to be good or bad uh, depending on what's the right uh, value and the loss uh, function was going to be an uh, indicator and the zero by loss, which is zero if we are right. Um, one to the other. Almost the simplest uh, decision problem, and now we are going to have data. So, uh, before having data, let's, let's do it uh, without data. So, let's assume, let's assume that uh, the probability that the, the Python or whatever comes from the right is two thirds. And the probability that the, the danger comes from the left is only one third. This might be because in the past uh, two thirds of the time the danger came from the right, and maybe one third of the time it came from the left. So if, if we are in this situation, <coughs> when we try to make the decision, we will try to find so the actions we can take are going to be either left or right. And we would like to minimize this thing. So it's going to be the spectrum. I'm going to write it and just for this. So this is going to be one minus the maximum. <coughs> okay. So this is going to be the expected value of the indicator of uh, A being different to X. I usually go in the case of the people, but then we could also go to the case of the different and see if it's going to be the same. And then we want to do like this. And then now this, uh, this minimum is going to happen if we choose A to be two thirds, because in that case, this is going to be uh, one. So we did this example before, right? So the way we make decisions is to choose the value with the highest probability and the best possible performance is one minus that maximum, in this case, one third. This is one third. And then when we would uh, choose as our best uh, possible decision would be Okay, so this is just trivial. Okay, so this is without data. We would always guess that the danger is going to come from the right just because it is going to be the most common. And then the expected loss will be one third, that of course will be the cases when the danger comes from the left. All right. <coughs> So now let's do this with data. So and the data, so the data that we are going to have is going to be um, some let's call it a radar measurement. So in this case, we have some uh, measurements coming from the data, uh, from uh, I mean from some radar, and uh, we have a model for that data. The model is that. Uh, the measurement of the radar is either plus one or minus one. So if the if the danger comes from the left is plus one, if the, the danger comes from the left is minus one. But since the radar is not perfect, uh, it has some noise, and then this noise is uh, it's a random variable that has a distribution to make things easy. Let's assume that it's a Gaussian distribution. The variable is n. The mean is going to be zero, and uh, we have the standard deviation zero. Okay, so we can assume that the radar is going to give us a number with mean 
plus one or minus one, and then uh, it will have some random noise that is going to be Gaussian distributed if zero. Okay, so this is uh, almost the simplest uh, model, but just to start with something simple. Uh, so other way to write this is that the, the distribution of the output of the radar given the value of S is going to be the Gaussian distribution, the variable is going to be B, the mean is going to be S, and the standard deviation is going to be C. Okay, so now let's uh, use this kind of data. Let's use this kind of data to make this decision to detect if the data is coming from the right or from the left. <clears throat> in order to do that, in order to do that, now we will we will minimize the expected loss, and now the distribution that we are going to use for the for the state is going to be the distribution of the state given the data. Right? So for every specific value of the measurement in the radar, we are going to use the distribution of the state. Value of the data, and in here we will have the indicator of A equal to S, and we will choose A which is minus one of the value of this. So that's the distribution that we have. We want this, but now we can get this just using the base uh, rule. So this thing is the uh, Probability of S multiplied by the probability of P with S divided by something uh, is going to be divided by the sum of the two possible cases of this. So P of S is two thirds and one third, so this is going to be two thirds so times the probability of P given by S is plus. Okay, so this is just a little bit more of a statistic, in this case, the uh, base rule. All right, so now we are um, ready. We are ready to know how to detect the uh, right, the uh, right or left. So let's make a, a picture. <coughs> so, right. I'm going to put the minus one here, and minus one here, zero, here. We are going to have a Gaussian distribution centered in minus one. And then uh, this is going to be one third multiplied by the Gaussian. Uh, and then the other the other notion is going to be multiplied by two thirds, so it's going to be bigger than this one. So okay, so the picture could be something like this. So now we want to minimize this uh, in order to minimize that. So we will be choosing, so we will be choosing the, we will be choosing the A. So the value of A that minimizes this. The best possible value, so the best possible uh, detection uh, for this conditional is going to be uh, plus one, is going to be plus one when, uh, when the probability, when the probability of the of the case with minus one, 
is going to be plus one if p in s plus minus p Is uh, it's more than so we will be choosing the A that minimizes this expression. The, the conditional will be this uh, conditional here. Now, the denominator, the denominator here in this expression is going to be the same. For the case plus one and for the case minus one. So when we minimize this, the denominator is not going to matter. <clears throat> and since we have the indicator of this, we are going to choose plus one if the numerator for the case minus one is smaller than the numerator for the case. Uh, Okay, so uh, in the picture, that would mean that uh, we will choose, we will detect the case as the danger coming. So we will detect the case as danger coming from the right if. This two thirds the time this motion is bigger than this one third. So from this value to the right, let's call this uh, threshold. So from this uh, threshold to the right, we will guess that the danger is coming from the right. From this threshold to the left, we will guess, <coughs> we will guess it's coming from the left. In this case, the threshold is uh, smaller than zero just because is uh, two thirds is bigger than one third. If uh, we have the same probability for the two cases, the threshold will be in the middle. So if the radar tells us something positive, we will choose uh, right. If it tells us something negative, we will choose left. So let's write that down. So the best uh, possible decision is uh, plus one. If the measure if the data is bigger than the threshold and um, is minus one if the data is smaller than the threshold. This region, which is white, this region, which is white. <clears throat> okay, good. So now let's uh, let's uh, let's do the let's do the value of the data in this case. How valuable, how valuable is the radar? That we well, so um, as we saw at the beginning, if we don't have radar at all, the expected loss of the best decision will be one third. Uh, if we don't use the radar, the best thing we can do, we will have expected uh, the probability of error in our detector is going to be one. Now, if we use the radar, what's the probability of error? Well, if we use the radar, right, and we take uh, we take uh, decisions like this, right, so we are going to use plus one and minus one if p is bigger than the threshold, uh, if p is smaller than the threshold. So uh, this is going to be so the, the expected loss of the detector that the uh, chooses uh, that uh, chooses uh, right or left this way will be the the but the cases in which uh, we choose right but uh, we should have chosen. Yeah. 
So the expected the expected loss of this detector will be the cases in which uh, we choose uh, right when we should have chosen uh, left and the other way around. So that will be the area under the intersection of the two intersections. I'm not going to write the difference because it's out of time. And it's a matter just of writing the equation. So is the area under the intersection of these two points. Okay, so I'm going to call this this area I'm going to call it uh, now maybe we can I can ask the last question. So well before we were saying that the, the value of data is always a positive number and depends on how related is the data with the state. So in this case this part, this uh, area here is going to be smaller than one third. And why is I mean where, where, why is that the smaller than one third? I didn't even put the so the expression of this will be the will be a couple of integrals. Uh, but even without doing the integrals, this area here is smaller than one third. Anybody? So just looking to the picture. Because otherwise the value of data will be negative. Yeah. Louder? Big louder? It, it's uh, because we we guarantee that the value of data is uh, non-negative. So R must be uh, below one third. So the value, uh, yeah, yes, yes. So yeah, so that's, you are saying that it is it's smaller than one third because what I said before was one, right? So that's, that's uh, I mean, that's okay. But in, in this example, why, why this area is smaller than one third? Uh, because of the, um, the properties of the probability distribution that uh, you are integrating uh, the tails. Uh, yeah, I know. Yes, yes. So that's, let me see if I find the code. <clears throat> yeah, it's something like that, right? So the uh, expected loss is going to be this area here. And then, well, this is a Gaussian distribution. So this is a Gaussian distribution, and we are multiplying it by one term. So the so the area under the blue curve, the area under the blue curve is one third. So the area of this uh, uh, subset is going to be smaller than one third. And basically, the value of the of the radar is going to be the area. Of that part uh, above. Right? So this here will be the value of our rate. I mean, you can compute it with the integrals and so on, but uh, visually that will be the value of the radar. And that also makes a lot of sense, right? So basically, the value of the data, the value of the data is going to be given by how thick are these doses. Right? So I was saying the, all these notions, the standard deviation is sigma. The standard deviation is sigma. So, uh, so the value of the data is going to depend on the okay. So on how big are these distributions? If we have uh, a radar that is very precise, we will have a radar that is very precise. Maybe one notion is going to be like this. And the other notion is going to be is going to be like that. Okay. So then no, both radars, I mean both radars, there's only one radar. Okay. So the radar is very precise, very small standard deviation, and then the value of data is basically one third. And so 
value of data is high if the data is very reliable. In other case in which the data, the value of the data will be higher, where we could make the value of data high, is if the value distributions are similar in both cases. So if in that same picture with the same uh, standard deviation, if the prior of both cases is the same, like uh, one half and one half, data is going to be more useful, right? Which I guess it also makes a lot of sense, right? So if uh, we have a lot of uncertainty or if the uh, engine is coming from the right and the left, that will that give us more information than if we have a lot of uh, prior knowledge. And the same the other way around, right? So if uh, from the beginning we know that the probability of the data coming from the left is uh, 0 0.000, 000, 000, 000, 000. even if the radar if we, even if the radar is quite accurate the value that we are going to get is very small because we already knew almost everything. Okay, let's look. So I think uh, if you don't have uh, questions, we can just stop here for today. And tomorrow we will, tomorrow at the beginning, we will be talking about the supervised classification and how we can use uh, training data uh, for the problem of um, classification. And then we will continue with uh, some game theory and minimax uh, problems.